Hi, I'm Chris Howard and welcome to Top of Mind. Today I want to talk about platforms and sort of what they are and what they're useful for and the fact that platforms make hard things easier to do. But I'm going to start at Royal Albert Hall in London. Uh, I've just come off a two weeks on the road where I was across the Nordics and then spent the weekend in London and did some meetings in London and then on to Germany. It was a whirlwind tour and I'm out of shape. Some of you that are starting to travel again probably can relate to that. It's actually harder to travel now and, and, and stay on top of things. But anyways, I wanted to reflect on that a little bit and tell you about my tour of Royal Albert Hall. Of course, you know that I'm a fan of music. I try to go see music in every city that I visit, but I'd never been to Royal Albert Hall in London. So I decided this time I'm going to take a tour. I'm going to do the tour and spend a couple of hours kind of learning about the place and then stay for a concert, which what I, this is what I did. And so highly recommend it. But one of the things I learned on the tour is that they've had to modernize significantly over the last 20, 30, 40 years to support the kinds of shows that they want to produce. So Royal Albert Hall is a concert hall sometimes. Sometimes it's a sports venue, which was surprising to me, but it does all kinds of different types of experiences for people and has for a very long time. But of course, what's happened is those experiences have become much more complex. So for example, Cirque du Soleil, many of you will be familiar with, they take the first two months of every year their load-in requires 70 trucks and a huge amount of logistical operations inside. They're reconfiguring things and so on. Now, if you know where Royal Albert Hall is, it's in a residential area. And so this idea of bringing 70 trucks in to load in and out would be really disturbing, of course, for an area like that. But what they've done, of course, over the years is they've dug up underneath Royal Albert Hall and there's five stories of utility underneath there. So there's an entrance where trucks come in and they actually go down into the into the bowels of Royal Albert Hall and do the load in and load out. And there's all kinds of structure and infrastructure underneath there, which makes it possible then to create these really complex experiences. This is a platform. It's a platform that they've had to build and modernize underneath this structure, which is so iconic. Now, of course, in businesses, we do the same thing. We talk a lot about technology platforms. It's not the only kind of platform. There are funding platforms, there are HR platforms, all different kinds of things, supply chain platforms and so on. But many of the clients that I talk to are in this position where they have this thing they need to maintain, but they need to dig out underneath it to actually put a new platform in place to create the types of experiences that they want, whether that be an information service of some kind or a user experience of some kind or new, entirely new kinds of businesses. And so it inspired me to think about what is a platform really and what are we being asked about now? While I was traveling across the Nordics and through Germany, a really common question came up, but it also came up from an emerging role. I've talked on top of mind before about this emergence of an AI leader, sometimes called a you know, chief AI officer, but often it's a VP of, of AI or something like that, which is a senior designation for this person who's responsible for figuring out AI for the organization. So we're watching that and starting to craft some material within Gartner specific for, for those people. But the one common question that kept coming up from these heads of AI is, what's the AI stack? Like, what is the foundation? What's the platform that is available for me to use and help me make sense of that? Now, this is a complicated question because anytime you're talking about a platform or a model, there's always more than one. So what I did, of course, is I went on to my teams and I teamsed my team <laughs> and asked, what do we have? What are the platforms that we have? What are the foundation diagrams, the reference architecture, our core? I got all kinds of stuff. And so it depended which angle you were looking at it from, from a runtime, from a developer angle, from just a strategy angle and so on. And they all have more or less detail in them. But here's the thing that's complicated when it comes to an AI stack. The perception right now is that everything is chaotic and everything's moving really fast and we're all trying to catch up with the market. Now that's true for a certain percentage of things that are relatively new in the space. But we went back and we did an inventory to say, well, how many of the magic quadrants that Gartner has produced have an AI component to them? And there are 42. <laughs> now that tells you something. What it tells you is that there are actually aspects of AI that are mature enough to cover in a magic quadrant. Because the way we create magic quadrants is the market needs to be relatively well-defined 
and stable. And so it does change year to year, but it's not these sort of these drastic swings of capabilities and so on. It sort of started there. You're getting a sense of, of the market kind of stabilizing. So there are aspects of AI where that is true. Where it's less true is in the generative AI space, where there's a lot of chaos and a lot of movement, and things are coming onto markets sort of every week, and there's this sort of this, this noise that is hard to parse through. So what we're doing to try to answer the question around what's the AI stack is to do some simplification and say, okay, well, if you're doing Gen AI, here are the things that you're using for maybe data discovery or prompt engineering or any of those types of things that we've talked at length about over the last year and a half. Uh, and there is change happening there. But then down below, there are actually parts of the stack that manage model development. These are more mature pieces. You go down lower, you get into things like the data environment and knowledge graphs and vector databases and so on. Again, more mature parts of the stack. And so what this will allow us to do is to be able to trace change as it's happening across the entire environment. But then the other thing we need to do here at Gartner that we're, we're doing right now is then map the markets onto that to say, well, who are the providers that are doing knowledge management or multimodal? Uh, who are the, the, the suppliers that can actually help with it, with orchestration across models? Who are the foundational model providers? How do they compare to one another and so on? So my team is working on creating a schematic, think of like a map of all those tunnels underneath Royal Albert Hall, uh, to help you understand what is there, how it all fits together, and who the players are in the market. Let me come back to the this new role that we're seeing, the AI leader role. Uh, Many companies all across different industries, and this includes what I would consider to be end users like, like banks or manufacturing companies or so on, uh, as well as the suppliers, the vendors themselves, are creating these positions. The, the, the pattern that we see is that this is a senior position that usually reports into whoever the Apex technology leader is, so CIO, CTO, or similar. Uh, and But at vendors, what we're seeing is interesting that this role almost always reports directly to the CEO, which makes some sense because the role itself is meant to define the strategy for AI for an organization. So if I'm actually a technology supplier, part of my products and services are going to be AI-based. So I'm defining something that I'm actually going to be offering out to the, my consumer. But I'm also determining how I'm going to use it for myself in the delivery of those services. So that in the, on the supplier or vendor side is what we see. Well, what I see at the end user is actually a very similar kind of role. So somebody that is technical enough to understand how the space is changing but also has influence in a strategic mindset so they can think about the business applications of a new technology like AI into the business. Now I want to tie this together, this idea of this emerging role and the stack. And it goes to our CEO data that I'll talk to you some more about in another episode. Is the strong belief from CEOs that AI is the thing that is going to bring about the type of growth that they seek. And so not just uh, uh, operational efficiency, but actually you know, the creation of new products and services and strategies based on AI. So that belief is really high. And what we've seen in the verbatims for the CEO survey is a displacement, a displacement of the word digital, which has been super prominent over the last 12 or 13 years, towards AI. So what's, what's happening there? What I think is that the, the word digital is a large word and it covers a lot of different technologies. And if I were trying to, to, to determine what's a digital stack, that'd be a really hard question to answer. What's a digital platform? But actually with AI, because there are discrete capabilities, it's easier to define what the, what the components of that are and how you would then use that to affect business change and change your business strategy. So you take the emergence of this new role, the fact that you have a stack of capabilities, then the charter for AI and an AI leader within a company becomes much clearer. So we started at Royal Albert Hall, going down into the basement, the five levels. I actually really want to see that and spend some time there because they need to enable experiences above that are changing constantly and every day sometimes. So they need an infrastructure that supports that. That's a platform. Platforms make hard things easier to do. And of course, it's not a new concept. We've been covering platforms at Gartner for as long as I've been here, which is you know, almost 20 years now. And in fact, the concept of platform engineering, one of, one of the top strategic technology trends for 2024, and there's good coverage there and really good detail about how to use that as a practice for anything, including AI. I'm Chris Howard. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time. Thank you.